If you've been following SpaceX, you would know the space company is building the most powerful rocket ever, the Starship. The next-gen rocket relies heavily on the Super Heavy booster to launch into space. However, SpaceX has never launched the Super Heavy to orbit. But that is about to change as SpaceX is finally launching the Super Heavy this November. What changes has SpaceX made to qualify the Super Heavy for orbital flight? What should fans expect during the maiden launch? Join us as we bring you the details of how SpaceX is finally launching the Super Heavy to orbit in November. Space travel has been a facet of modern human existence for decades, with different nations sending off astronauts to space at regular intervals. Some rockets that have launched famous missions have become famous themselves as they have cemented their place in history. While many of these famous rockets were commissioned by governments, the space age has entered a new era with private companies seeking to make a profit from the space business. SpaceX is the undisputed leader in the private space sector, with strings of successes that other companies can only envy. Led by the world's richest man Elon Musk, the company is always trying to outdo itself, which is the best way to describe its latest rocket, the Starship. SpaceX has quickly established itself as a rocket builder with multiple successful rockets under its belt. It owns the most powerful rocket in operation, the Falcon Heavy, and also the busiest rocket in operation, the Falcon 9. The company is able to save on launch costs thanks to the partial reusability of the two rockets. SpaceX can recover the booster and reuse it for multiple launches. However, for Musk, the holy grail of space rocketry is a fully reusable rocket, and this is the direction he's pushing SpaceX under his watch with the Starship. The Starship is the next-generation rocket from SpaceX, and Musk has mighty plans for it. The billionaire dreams of planting humans on Mars, a dream he has had since childhood. However, for this to happen, Musk needs a powerful spacecraft. And Musk doesn't dream small, so he envisions moving one million people from the Earth to Mars to kick off his Martian colony. While the amount of people Musk hopes to transport is staggering and it's debatable where he'll find one million volunteers ready for interplanetary relocation, Musk first needs to prepare the planet for the arrival of the colonizers. This requires the movement of massive cargo as everything on Mars has to be made here during the takeoff period. We are talking about tons and tons of cargo. And this is where the Starship comes in. It is literally the bridge between the Earth and Mars as it's the official transport vehicle of the Martian crowd. To realize massive savings on costs and ensure quick turnaround and the shortest times between missions, Musk has ensured the Starship is completely reusable. Building a rocket is hard enough. Yes, it is literally rocket science. However, building a reusable rocket is on another level of heart. SpaceX has built and tested dozens of prototypes, some of them combusting in spectacular fashion. However, it's all led to this point where the lower stage, known as the Super Heavy, is finally ready to blast off to orbit. Orbital flight is a huge milestone for the Super Heavy, and SpaceX crews are working round the clock to make it happen. One of the important tests to carry out on a rocket is the tank crushing testing, which to the untrained eye may cause panic as it's basically SpaceX trying to destroy the rocket booster. However, what SpaceX wants to know is the performance of Starship and Super Heavy and qualify new designs and manufacturing techniques without taking the chance of losing an entire upper stage or booster. So the test tanks are as small as possible and much shorter than either Starship stage, but they're also assembled out of 9-meter wide steel barrels and domes almost identical to the sections that make up Starship and Super Heavy. SpaceX's normal method of crush testing is to use the tanks to verify design changes before those changes are implemented on more expensive prototypes. However, the company changed the script for prototype B7.1. For those not in the know, B7.1 is designated as such because it shares many of the significant design changes that SpaceX had already implemented on Super Heavy Booster 7 or B7. SpaceX started testing B7.1 before Super Heavy Booster 7 was damaged by an explosion that paused its first Raptor engine test campaign. The crew resumed testing B7.1 in mid-July, which it completed before the end of the month. SpaceX has not revealed why it decided to build and test Booster 7 before B7.1, but it meant it ran the risk of any significant issues discovered during B7.1 testing, disqualifying the booster for flight testing and wasting months of work and tens of millions of dollars spent on the prototype. 
However, Musk probably knew something we didn't know as B7.1 appeared to sail through multiple cryogenic proofs and crush tests without any catastrophic issues. Only on the last crush test did any part of the test tank finally give way, and the resulting damage was still minor. The crush test was done by installing the tank on a sturdy base with the help of clamps similar to those on the Starbase Orbital Launch Site's launch mount. Then, a hat-like structure was installed on top of the tank, resting on the surface that the Starship upper stage would sit on during launch. The crew then rigged massive ropes to the hydraulic cylinders on the base. Next was filling B7.1 with cryogenic liquid nitrogen. The purpose was to simulate the thermal and mechanical stresses of real oxygen-methane propellant. The hydraulic cylinders retracted, pulling the cap down to evenly exert massive crushing forces down the vertical axis of the test tank. At the same time, additional rams installed underneath B7.1 may have simulated how 13 Central Raptor engines producing thrust at the same time would affect the tank. It seems SpaceX was simply verifying that Super Heavy Booster 7 can bear the weight of a fully fueled Starship, which is about 1,350 tons or 3 million pounds riding on top of it. Or the rocket maker was simulating an entire orbital launch and how it would affect the Super Heavy. This is because the test replicated many of the forces the boosters will experience between liftoff and landing. The prototype came out of the testing largely unscathed, save for a slight buckle at the top of the tank, even when SpaceX tried to pressurize the tank to the point of bursting. SpaceX then moved on to firing up the Super Heavy, some hours after giving the Starship the same treatment. This time, SpaceX used Prototype B7, and it was the first time it used its new Starbase orbital launch site to support a static fire test. Significantly, it was also the second time the booster would undergo a static fire test. The test involved a single Raptor engine, and it is the version 2 Raptor that SpaceX attached to the booster. There are significant differences between the first and second generation Raptor engines. For instance, in the first version, the pre-burners would ignite once a high enough flow rate was achieved, creating hot gas that is mixed and ignited again in the main combustion chamber when starting the engine. However, SpaceX has removed the torch igniters from Raptor 2's main combustion chamber. What is not confirmed is whether it means that Raptor 2 does not have any zero main combustion chamber igniters. But the major change in the ignition process might be why observers of the test noticed the engine testing of the Ship 24 and Booster 7 started off so sluggishly. However, there are serious gains moving from Gen 1 to Gen 2. In fact, beside the Gen 1, Raptor 2 is basically a new engine and it can produce 25% more thrust or 230 tons instead of 185 tons. In a sense, while testing the Raptor 2 on the Super Heavy, it is not different from SpaceX starting from scratch. When it became clear that V1.5 would be replaced, there were speculations as to whether SpaceX would need to invalidate previous testings, but there is no doubt now that much of the work had been undone. Whatever the case, engine testing on the Super Heavy and Starship is not a simple task. The Super Heavy went through another round of testing in tandem with the Starship. It is part of a cautious test to ignite the Raptor engines on the two rocket stages. While SpaceX has yet to test more than three Raptor 2 engines on the Super Heavy, the company still has a ways to go, as there are a total of 33 rocket engines on the powerful booster. All 33 engines have to be tested together at one point. One of the things SpaceX is focusing on is making sure that Super Heavy B7's Raptor engines are well contained during anomalies, meaning one engine failing won't damage or affect the booster itself, other engines, or even the launch pad. Of course, more stringent requirements will only make the development and testing more complicated, but SpaceX has a lot to gain if it pulls it off. The next test involved seven rocket engines on the Super Heavy, making it the most amount of rocket engines ever tested on the booster. The outcome pleased Musk, who wrote on Twitter that the chamber pressures looked good in all seven engines. After confirmation of the test, SpaceX returned Booster 7 to the high bay for what Musk called robustness upgrades. He also revealed that Booster 8 was going to move to the pad for testing. He also revealed that a full-stack wet dress rehearsal involving all the engines would soon take place. When fully stacked, the Starship is the tallest rocket in the world, standing at 120 meters. And in signs that the first orbital flight is near, SpaceX has stacked the booster and Starship prototypes. While the company decided to stack Booster 7 and Starship 24, it has already prepared Starship 25 and Booster 8 and 9 for testing. 
This outcome is not surprising, as Musk had earlier said SpaceX would soon have two pairs of Starships that qualify for the orbital flight test. The CEO is actually targeting one full-stack Starship production every two months. While the stacking was going on, SpaceX continued to repair damaged heat shield tiles on SN24, which suggests it has been selected for the first orbital flight. The tiles are necessary to protect against damage to the Starship due to the massive amount of heat produced during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The company is using a new method to attach the tiles to prevent them from falling off easily. Booster 7 had all the outer circle Raptor engines installed before being mounted on the orbital launch mount. Just like the first time, stacking the two prototypes was another opportunity to create memorable photos. The company posted stunning images of the full Starship on its official Twitter handle. It's significant as this may well be the last stacking before the first orbital launch, which would see the Super Heavy booster return to land before the Starship re-enters the atmosphere about one and a half hours later. Let's hear what you like most about SpaceX's Starship in the comments section below.